Hello and welcome to 1320, the coolest hangout for youth, teens, everyone in between, infinity and beyond. My name is uh, General Maniakis. No, 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 we would not like that one. My name is Leif Erickson. Yes. And uh, you remember Mbappe? So, how ah, did I just use that joke twice? Anyway, anyway, anyway. So, welcome back to Choosing to Lose, episode number two. So, we hashed on what Choosing to Lose is in episode one, and we are talking about at what cost. We are talking about pride, right? So, episode two. When the price of winning is not worth it, I know it sounds like episode one, but then in this context we put when our short-term goals trump our long-term goals. Okay? We good? So, have you ever pursued something, right? Then uh, whatever you did is good for that moment, right? You achieve something that moment, but then later on it comes and bites you in the behind. You have, definitely. I have to, very many times. I don't know those times when I was being told, uh, let's say for example, it's cold, right? And I'm told, uh, don't take cold water, it's not good for you. I'm like, ah, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. So I take cold water, I feel fresh, I feel good. Then the next day I'm coughing. So, <laughs> good for me. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So, we should not let our, let's say, desires for the meantime uh, ruin whatever we would have achieved in the long run. That's basically this whole episode. And guess what? We are going back to Mjomba Bonaparte. You remember him? It feels like yesterday. So, uh, huh. Be before before we embark on the journey of Mjomba Bonaparte, Mjomba Napoleon, I mean, uh, we will reflect on somebody else. Last time we reflected on Saul and how his disobedience caused him his kingship. This time we're going to talk about the strong man himself, okay? Okay, that is a very weak double bicep. We're going to talk about the strong man himself, Samson. So, uh, huh. we all know who Samson is. For those who do not know who Samson is, let me, let me bring you up to speed, right? So Samson is a Nazarite. A Nazarite or a Nazarene? Nazarite. Let's say a Nazarite. Wait, wait. What, what did I say? Uh, hmm. Yes. Ah, yes. So, Samson was a Nazarite. And Nazarites have specific things that they're not supposed to do. Okay? Not supposed to touch or anything. Or, yeah, they're supposed to touch anything dead. Uh, they are not supposed to drink. They are not supposed to, you know, cut their hair. They had, like, really massive, like, long hair. And I think that's what John the Baptist was at some point. Not at some point, I think that's what he was. Anyway, 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 anyway. So, let's go to the story of Mjomba. I'm so, I'm so eager to talk about this, this uh, short man, this great conquest guy, great conqueror, the conquest guy. Uh, key statement, okay, before we begin. When we choose what is permissible over what is beneficial, we may win short-term gains, but lose what truly really matters in the long run. I will say this again for those who are writing. When we choose what is permissible over what is beneficial, we may win short-term gains, but lose what truly matters in the long run. That was good. You got that? Yes? Okay. So, let's look at Napoleon's deviations. So we covered the uh, Battle of Borodino. Why am I saying it in an Italian accent and it's Russian? The Battle of Borodino. So, uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, driven by his insatiable ambitions, embarked on his Russian campaign in 1812. We talked about September 7th, 1812. So. His strategic brilliance, of course, was unquestionable in his previous battles, but his deviation from sound logical principles and strategic caution led to disaster. 
So he believed that his army could live off the land. Remember, these people are French, right? Not trying to uh, sound, uh, make it sound like French people are soft, but the climate in France is not the same climate in Russia. Okay, so in Napoleon's mind, he was like, "Oh no, we are going to be able to, we are going to be able to live off the land." No. Ignoring all the logistical uh, realities of supplying a massive force in the vast and hostile terrains of Russia. So he, de he derailed or he deviated from the advice of his sound generals, okay? And uh, his, seasoned, his sound and seasoned generals, who warned him of the perils of Russian winter and the scorched earth tactics of the Russian forces. But Napoleon's focus was on immediate victory. This guy did not care. He was like, I have won all of these lands. Russia will be nothing to me, to be something small. My army can go and take it all at once, very fast. It eh? <laughs> sounds very kikuyu and not French. <laughs> anyway, anyway. So, uh, he did not think about the sustainability of the campaign. Okay, he wanted to go there, uh, capture the land, make it his, and that's it. But imagine he was told, right? Like that side, Nikubaya, the winter is horrible. Our men might not be able to survive that winter. You know, these uh, Russian fellas, they fight with bears, they take uh, coffee with bears. As easy to go up to enjoying baguettes. <laughs> I don't know if that's what he said. But anyway, Proverbs 16.25 There is a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. Wait, what? Proverbs 16.25 Okay? There is a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. Proverbs is getting a bit too real now. So, uh, I don't even think there's something to explain in that in that uh, verse, because that's very straightforward. You might think it's right, but then in the end, it's wrong. So the battle of Borodino, although a tactical victory, right? Like if you think about it, Napoleon still won, as I covered in the previous episode. But then it came at a tremendous cost, right? Uh, it was not sustainable. Uh, the army was weakened and demoralized. It was not, it was not good for the future, uh, for the future endeavors, for the future um, ventures. Okay. The French army suffered enormous casualties. The victory was, I still don't know how to pronounce this thing. Is it Firig or Firig? Firig. Let's say Firig. A win that inflicted a, such a devastating toil on the victor that it was tantamount to defeat, okay? I don't know if this is paramount, but then old English tantamount. So when Napoleon finally reached Moscow, he found it abandoned and burning. A hollow victory marks the beginning of his army's catastrophic retreat. So they had to go back, okay? They had won, yes. They had won the battle, but lost the war. That's, that's more, that's more like it. Tantamount. Anyway, Anyway, remember, when we choose what is permissible or what is beneficial, we may gain short-term gains, right? But lose what is, lose what matters in the long run, right? Yeah, lose what really matters in the long run. Anyway, so, Napoleon's deviation from his sound uh, military men, right? The tra tactics and strategies and logistics. Right, led to the eventual decimation of his Grand Army. It's not Grand Army, it's Grand Army. Like A R M E with a uh, Apple logo, uh, Apple coffee, and another E. Commercial. So, he, this historic example underscores, uh, historic, historic example underscores the danger of pursuing what is permissible or achievable at the expense of what is truly beneficial. Okay, now we have talked about German Napoleon. 
let us talk about now strongman himself samson so samson was not like any other guy right his his birth was foretold do you know how special you have to be that before you're born your birth is spoken of like yes you will uh, let's say for example uh, your parents right they tell you oh you know like uh, before let's say for example uh, eight months or not even eight like a year before you're born yeah someone came to us and told us that uh, we would have a son and the name would be this and this son would go and do this and this and this and that son is you you will feel special because in real sense that is special how many children in the bible do you know that their births were foretold very few and yes i just said in the bible i don't mean like in those times i'm saying those that were mentioned in the bible very few because if you think of all those generations that have passed since genesis till well till let's say that john all those generations that passed okay even when john was writing revelation right all those generations that were there very few of them were actually announced before their birth so that that's a sign that this kid is special right and uh yeah he grew up to become one of the most powerful judges like powerful literally and uh socially okay so uh he was set apart from his birth as a nazarite so his strength was legendary and potential for leadership and deliverance was immense however Sam samson's life was marked by deviations from his nazarite vow which ultimately led to his downfall okay so think think about this yeah uh, you are told that you are born to be this special person right you're born to be this special figure but you're not supposed to do these things if you want to maintain your your title if you want to maintain your destiny would you do those things no you wouldn't if you are told uh, let's say for example uh, you would become uh, a great person in this land or 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 let's say you become a great scientist right forget just normal scientists let's let's be very specific you will become like a, a a nuclear physicist right and you will find something like a big breakthrough in that field you know that you will become a nuclear physicist right will you take marine biology as a course in university unless you want to like would you pursue that as your major no you'll take something in the lines of nuclear physics right exactly so if you want to get to where you have in like where you are told you would be you have to do those things that would get you there you do not deviate from the path right because if you deviate from the path then things would go wrong and they would go wrong quick so what was Samson not supposed to do as a Nazarite he was not supposed to touch anything dead I had spoken this earlier uh, yet he touched the carcass of a lion the lion that he yeah that one he was not supposed to drink wine yet he hosted a feast likely involving wine because back then like let's hold a feast then they come with those jerry cans of wine that they keep with they don't even know what they call jerry cans are calabashes i don't even know what they are gods they let's call them calabash okay they come with calabash of wine <laughs> okay um so his deviations continued as he visited a prostitute in Gaza and later fell in love with Delilah. Yeah, this guy, this guy was doomed. <laughs> okay, he was cooked. What? Samson's pursuit of his desires over his divine calling led him astray. And uh in as much as we think of this like yeah we cannot blame him he's only he's only human it's true but think about this would that one thing that you do that would possibly cost you your destiny would that thing be worth it would it really be worth it think about it just think about it like if you're told the whole uh, 
nuclear physicist thing, yeah. And then uh, you learn that yes, you can pursue nuclear physics fully, or you take a part-time course, let's say, like in something that's not even related. Let's say, like in studying birds. I'm not saying that studying birds is, is bad. I'm just saying that if you are a nuclear physicist, you wouldn't go and study birds. But then you have an interest in birds, right? So you decide to deviate from nuclear physics and go to, uh, you know, the study of birds. I don't know what it's called. I'm sorry. For those people who do not just type it down below. Anyway, uh, when you do that, you'd find that, let's say, you get this major interest in learning about birds. You learn more and more and more. Then you graduate. Alafu, uh, you hear that whatever you were supposed to like find out in the land of nuclear physics, somebody else did. You have lost your destiny. You have lost the thing that you are born to do. So now, what do you do? You probably continue studying birds, but then that's not what you are born for. So you create your own path that might not lead to the ideal conclusion of where your life was supposed to be. Okay? That's what these deviations did for Samson. Just because he desired something and followed it. And probably enjoyed it at that time, like, you know, the feast thing. I don't think he enjoyed touching a dead lion. But the whole feast thing, the whole visiting a prostitute, falling in love with, the, you know, it's it's something nice for him. Like, ah, oh, there's this woman, Delilah, she's very beautiful. Uh, i fallen in love with her. First of all, uh, she was from the enemy's side. First of all, okay? She was in cahoots with the enemy. If this man was not, you know, led by his eyes or by his emotions or by his lust, yeah, or by his desires, what he would do is probably study this woman. And if he did, then he, it's even stupider than, than I thought. Imagine knowing that this woman that you're falling in love with is, you know, from your enemy's side. And then you're like, eh, it doesn't really matter. I, I love her, I love her. Who did you think that your enemies would try to use her to get to you? Samson, I'm talking to you. Anyway, so, despite being a good leader for 20 years, Samson lost everything in a single night of passion with Delilah. That's from Judges 14, uh, verse 8 to 9. No, 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 that was Kwendelea. That was Mbele Mbele, that was Mbele Mbele. Mm. Past Judges 16, who go? So, uh, he won Delilah's affection but lost his eyes, his hair, his strength, and his freedom. First of all, uh, I, I, I don't know why, but I think I've downplayed Samson's strength. This man was able to tear gates with his bare hands. Okay, the lion that we spoke of that was dead, he tore that lion in two. Bare hands. I know, I know with, with UK slang, bare hands means like a lot of punches, but no, like bare hands. So, uh, his winning in Delilah's love was Ferric. Winning what did not matter and losing what truly really mattered. Because imagine if this man would have stayed on the path, right? Imagine how great he would have been. I think at some point this guy would even be able to fly. Yes, I am comparing uh, Samson to Superman, but no, there actually is a superhero called Samson in DC. Look him up. Or don't, if, if that's not what you're into. But for those people who love those things, yeah, you can search him up. Or watch all, or watch all Star Superman, the 2010 one. Watch that one. Utamona Samson Apple. Not this Samson, just some guy called Samson. Who's super strong? Anyway, anyway, anyway. Proverbs twelve fifteen. <sighs> Fools think their own way is right, but the wise listen to others. Okay, I have to say one thing. King Solomon was cooking. When he wrote Proverbs. This one was cooking. Oof. I don't know why I looked to the side and gave that look, but this man cooked, OK? 
okay? Uh, King David might have had the pipes and the lyrics and everything, but Solomon cooked with Proverbs. Anyway, 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 anyway. So, deviation from values, again, may offer short-term gains, but the long-term costs are far greater. Remember what you're talking about? When we choose what is permissible or what is beneficial, we win short-term gains, but lose what truly matters in the long term. So, 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 in our lives today, we do not face the same problems as Samson, the whole touching lions and drinking wine thing. We do not face that. But what we do face uh, could be in various ways. It could be in career decisions, right? Uh, let's say pursuing job opportunities that offer money, like a lot of money, over something that you actually want to do. Then you find yourself uh, living in this rat race, living in this hamster wheel, where you, let's just say rat race and hamster wheel, which makes total sense put together, but no sense at all. Anyway, so uh, we find ourselves in this hamster wheel. We just keep on doing the same thing over and over again. We don't want to be there, but then the money is good. So we just motivate ourselves through the money. We might win the money, yes, but then lose long-term joy, long-term satisfaction. Like, you know when you do something that you really want to do, you love it. It does not even feel like work. You feel like, I can do this all day. Captain America. <laughs> anyway, when we do what we don't want to do, but, because, but we're doing it because it has some benefits, it might not be the best. We might have the worst time. We might be complaining day and night, yet we still keep on doing it just because it offers that short-term gain. Number two, personal choices. Okay, it's not just about careers, also personal choices. Sometimes we might choose to do something that um, we think is okay, right? But then it will cost us in the end. So, uh, engaging in behaviors that are socially acceptable but spiritu spiritually detrimental, such as excessive drinking and indulging in gossip. Okay, I didn't know about the second part. But yeah, I can see how, how indulging in gossip would actually be detrimental. Mm, I see, I see, I see. Anyway, number three, relationships. So, choosing to maintain relationships that lead us away from God's purpose for our lives rather than fostering those that build us up in faith it's also another way okay yes you could have let's say fun exciting friends but do everything wrong and have quote-unquote boring friends that do things are right and then you choose for the fun exciting ones and you lose your way you lose sight of whatever is truly important that would be sad i'm not even going to lie that would be very sad just because um, your friends want to, want to do something and you feel like, you know what, that, that might be fun. Yeah, that, that might be cool. When, when other people see me doing this with these people, they think I'm cool. Yeah? It doesn't matter. Okay? And today I'm just quoting uh, comic book characters. Okay? That was from Alman in Crisis of Two Arts. So, uh, call to action, right? Remember, we've talked about uh, Napoleon. Now we've talked about uh, <laughs> we've talked about Kakasami. Kakasami is Samson. So, uh, call to action: stand firm in your convictions. The other one was uh, something about being humble. The previous one was about uh, learning to be humble, right? Now this one is stand firm in your convictions. If you are to do something and that is the thing that you are called to do, do that. Do not let your desires whisk you away to do something else that might make you happy in that point in time, but then in the long run, it will cost you, okay? I know people with ADHD might struggle with this because they might be, yeah, yeah I'm going to do this, and like, ooh. I know, I, I feel you, I feel you. Slight ADHD here. Anyway, so 
To avoid the high cost of deviation, we must stand firm in our convictions and prioritize what is beneficial over what is merely permissible. Okay? And here are some ways to do it. Remember, we are not just talking uh, things that we might not be able to do, right? You might not just say, uh, let's say, uh, you know, stand on your convictions, stand on business. That's what I want to say. Not stand on your convictions. Stand firm in your convictions, stand on business. But then how do you do that, right? Because if you're told to do something and you don't know how to do it, it will be hard for you to do it. You might find it in the end, but then there might have been damage done already. So, remember what I told you last time, everything begins with God. Number one, seek God's wisdom. Simple as that. Okay, that's number one. Uh, let's give a reference here from the Bible. James 1.5. It says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. So let's make it a daily habit, yeah, to ask God for wisdom. Not every time you're asking him for, let's say, things like money or something. No, ask him for wisdom. Remember that's what Solomon asked. He would have asked for anything else in the world, but he asked for wisdom because he knew what was important. Okay? Probably didn't have the best of endings, but at that point in time, he cooked. Number two. Evaluate long-term consequences. Now this, now, now this is very applicable, okay? When, let's say, you're with your friends, right? Don't go do something wrong. Let's say don't go to, to like club or, or to do drugs or something. Think about the long-term consequences. Evaluate, assess the, the situation. Think about it, right? Because you can be like, okay, fine, I'll go with them. Like we'll interact, we'll socialize, we'll do all of these things. But in the end, where will that leave me? Okay, will that leave me, let's say, high out of my mind? Will that leave me, uh, let's say, on the floor? I have uh, dirtied my clothes with, you know, when people get drunk, people do stupid mm -hmm. stuff. So, think about the end. Would I become an addict? Would this uh, have, like, uh, consequences or, or, or uh, damage done to my brain, to my mental ability. Or let's say if you're going to do other stuff, you know, it could be anything, right? Think about the long-term consequences. Don't think about, ah, this will be fun. This will be like a fun two hours or fun three hours when I'm hanging out with them. But then when you go home, but, uh, like when you go back home and you, you are alone and you're thinking and sitting and, you know, pondering on things, you're like, why did I do this? Was that really necessary? What if it affects me? Think about that, okay? Before you actually do it, evaluate the long-term consequences. Uh, where are we going to read for this? Proverbs, again, Proverbs. Right, Proverbs 4, 6 to 27. It says, mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. The Bible literally says it itself. I'm not even telling you because I want to tell you and sound right. No, the Bible is telling you. Don't get sidetracked by evil. Number three, surround yourself with wise counsel. Okay? Straight up, Proverbs 15, 22. Plans go wrong for lack of advice. Many advisors bring success. Now this is a bit tricky because not every advisor is a true advisor, right? Some people might be advising you because uh, they think they know the situation. Some people advise you because they do know the situation and they know how best to handle it. Now, this is, this is our part to play. We need to find out who truly knows the situation and not the people who think they know the situation. Because somebody can advise you, give you kind of good advice, but then with a sprinkle uh, of wrong advice. Then you follow that and you wonder why things are going haywire. But then we need to have discernment on who we ask. Okay, not just what we ask, on who we ask. Because you cannot ask, for example, uh, you cannot go to a farm, right? And then ask this farmer how to, let's say, work out Banuli's principle. 
that's physics. You, you cannot do that, because now the farmer will be like, eh, eh, ah, banuli ni nani? You principal or shule gani? Something like that. So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, surround yourself with the wise counsel. Number four, prioritize integrity. Yeah, this ties in with number two, okay? When you think about the long term, uh, when you evaluate the long term consequences, you think about what is right. Because you'd be like, oh, if this leads me in the wrong direction, then it's not the way to go. So obviously, you'll be practicing integrity. And um, here we're reading from Proverbs 11.3. Honesty guides good people. Dishonesty destroys treacherous people. Just, just straight shots, everyone. <laughs> Solomon is not holding back here. So yes, we should be honest with our situations. Right? Let's say, for example, you're a Christian, yeah? You don't drink. When your friends are saying, ah, come, let's go have a drink, tell them no. First of all, you're being honest. You don't drink. Why would you associate yourself with people in a situation where they drink? And I'm not saying you should abandon them or give up on them. No. I'm just saying that if they are partaking in that situation, you have no reason to be there. Okay? Okay? And I'm using drink as an example because that's what people majorly understand. There are those nitty-gritty things that people do not like, I don't think that's really wrong. Some of them are. Most of them are. Okay, that's a little bit dramatic anyway. Uh -huh. Number five, guard your heart. <sighs> I've just said this, and I remembered, uh, I remembered a sermon that we had back when I was in high school, yeah? I think it was, <sighs> now this is going to make me sound old. Either 2017 or 2018. I know it doesn't really sound that long. Maybe like 2017, that's the Yes. Yes. 2017 or seven years ago. <laughs> anyway, 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 anyway. And that's someone, the preacher was saying, Funga Moyo. Right? Guard your heart. Because from the heart, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And when we speak something, we have thought about it, right? And when we think about it, we think of doing it. And in most cases, we'll actually do it. So guard your heart. Make sure that whatever's in your heart is the right thing. I've not even read the script. I don't even know what it says here. But I'm just telling you from what I remember back then. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the cause of your life. Because, you see, that was, that was actually good, yeah? Because uh, your heart determines what you do, right? You've, you've heard people say, uh, this has been the desire of my heart to do this thing. If you desire it in your heart, most likely you will do it. You've, you've ever heard those criminals who are like, hey, I have always wanted to, let's say, for example, to rob a bank. Then they go rob a bank, then things go wrong. They're kind of still happy that they did get to rob a bank. All the things went wrong. It's something that they desire to do. Remember, what you desire is what your life will be. Okay? So protect your heart by being mindful of what you allow into your mind and spirit. Okay? Whatever you see, whatever you hear, whatever you, you listen to. Huh? You see here, listen. But there's a difference between hearing and listening. Okay. So, whatever you are in vicinity of, right, make sure that only the right things get to your heart. Ambition, determination, focus. Those are the things. But then, laziness. Just uh, being sloth. Being a sloth. Not being the animal. Just being, you know, lazy. You don't want to do anything. And you find yourself uh, actually liking, enjoying doing nothing. But with that, it will cause you, it will cause you very, 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 very many uh, deep regrets in the future. I'm just saying. Number six, embrace accountability. 
Ah. Accountability is that one thing that people do not want to hear. Okay? People want to do things and get away with them. That's basically what you hear when, let's say, for example, a criminal has been caught and they say, uh, they asked, why did you do this? Like, oh, I thought I could get away with it. Zero accountability. Because you do not think, okay, what if I'm caught? Okay? So, what is my stance from there? I've not even, again, I've not even read the script. So, Galatians uh, 6, verse 1 to 2. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by sin, what should it do? You who are godly should gently and humbly help that person get back on the right path. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Share each other's burdens, and in this way we obey the law of Christ. Okay? Establishing accountability groups, right? Having an accountability partner, somebody who would keep you in check. That is very important. That is very important. Because if we don't have that, we will not feel the need of doing things. Right? Let's say uh, if your aim is to, for most people, right? The, the beginning of the year, they'll be like 2024 or 2020 something is the year that I get fit, the year that I go to the gym, the year that I work out. If you're doing this by yourself, believe me, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. Not even the discipline part of it. Even the motivation sometimes might not even help you. Okay, but then if you have somebody doing this with you, you're like, oh, let's say, for example, like you're supposed to skip rope, like, let's say, a thousand times. Then some, then your partner asks you, hey, have you skipped rope today? They're like, oh, oh, not yet, not yet. Let me, let me get to do it. Then it's not like a hundred, two hundred, blah, blah, blah. Even if you may not get to a thousand, at least you've done something that day. But then Ukwapekiako, what will happen is, oh, I'm supposed to skip rope today. I don't feel like it. I can't skip tomorrow. Tomorrow gets and you'll be like, uh, tomorrow like arrives and you'll be like, hey, today is also not a good day. I will skip tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know I keep on doing this when, when I'm conveying laziness. Anyway, 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 anyway. anyway. So yeah. Uh, establish these relationships with trusted friends, right? Because sometimes, <laughs> again, whatever we do, it has to be, you know, the right thing. But then sometimes we give the wrong people the right thing to do. Because if you find somebody who is also in that same level as you of uh, not being motivated enough, not being disciplined enough, you could tell them something like, uh, if they ask you, like, hey, have you skipped today? they will be like, ah, no. Today, yeah, you see ski. They'll be like, hey, yes, Sam, what have you seen your ski now? You see where this is going. And sometimes, and I'm just using fitness as an example. Sometimes it's things that are way worse. Let's say, for example, if it's your studies, how somebody would be, like, reminding you, like, hey, have you studied today? Like, oh, no, I've not studied, but thanks for reminding me. But then you find somebody, have you studied today, like, ah, uh, I don't really feel like it. Like, ah, bro, same, same. I, I, don't, I don't feel like it. Then let's say you go to school the next day, and then the lecturer or the teacher is like, hey, here's a surprise cut or a surprise exam. <laughs> and you're able to do it. I was as a part of that, yeah. <laughs> Not gonna lie, you're getting cooked. So, number seven, I know this has very many things to 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 call to us to action, yeah? Number seven, from Hebrews 12, 1 to 2. Therefore, since you're surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, okay? Especially the sin that so easily trips us up or ensnares us in other versions. And let us run the endurance the, let us run with endurance the rest God has said before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith, the author and finisher of our faith in other versions. Because the joy of the awaiting because the joy of awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. What point is this for number seven? <sighs> Focus on the bigger picture. Point number two was uh, is, uh, evaluate long-term consequences, right? 
focus on the bigger picture. Think about tomorrow. And by tomorrow, I don't mean like technically tomorrow. It could be tomorrow, but it could also be 10 years from now, right? You, you're saying that, uh, let's say, you don't want to finish high school, you want to drop out of high school because or because this lesson or this uh, subject, you don't really like it. Think about yourself 10 years from now. You're dropping out of high school. What are the chances? What are the true chances? of you living a successful life. I'm not saying that you dropping out of high school would cause you to be unsuccessful, no. I'm just saying that the chances would be higher if you continue with your studies, right? And I'm not just using studies as the only example. It could be anything. Just think about the future, think about the bigger picture, right? If your friends are going, you know, to do, to sin, not even to do sin, to sin, if they're going to sin, Think about the bigger picture, like how will this affect me, not just today or tomorrow, five years down the line. Let's say uh, your friends are going to, you know, take or to do hard drugs. And then you think about the future, I think like five years from now, will I be an addict? Will I need to go to a rehabilitation center? Would I be arrested even? Think about that, okay? Look at the bigger picture, man. For those who have read Kigogo, you know that line. The only English line in a Swahili set book. Is that the only English line? I don't think it's that the only English. If it is, well, I remember well. So, 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 so. Integrity in small decision leads us to honor in great ones. Okay? When you look at the bigger picture, when we do what is right, we are prioritizing integrity, spoken earlier. And so, yeah, integrity in the small decisions give on and the correct ones and uh, that's it for this week's episode for episode two and uh, yeah let's remember uh, not to deviate from our values and principles because once you do that things go wrong like dangerously wrong so yeah uh, let us pray heavenly father I thank you for this beautiful day thank you for the word that you've given us uh, I believe that it has come at a perfect time, that it has uh, gotten to the right people who need to hear this word, Father. I pray, Father, that you may help us understand that short-term wins are not as valuable as uh, long-term uh, victories, Father. I pray that uh, you may help us understand this word, that you may help us practice our calls uh, to action, Father, that you may help us understand that uh, what we do today affects our tomorrow. And yes, we might think that we already know this, Father, but help us, Father, ingrain this into our minds, ingrain this into our hearts, my Jehovah God, because what comes from the heart is what we do. Father, may you fill our hearts with good things, may you fill our hearts uh, with things Father, that are right, things that please you, things that, uh, that you have planned for us, things that you have uh, called us to do. I pray thank you for everybody who's watching and who's listening, who's taken out of their time, out of uh, their day, uh, to receive this message. Father, I pray that you may bless them. That whatever the desires of their hearts are, Father, I pray that you may uh, grant them, that you may help them achieve what you want them to achieve, King of Glory. Even as we go into this next week, Father, I pray that we may understand, that we may focus, that we may keep our eyes on the path, that we may not be led astray like Samson. And even tying into the first episode, Father, that we may not be as proud as Saul, that we may be able to seek you, Father, for all the things that we need to do. That we may be able to seek your wisdom, that we may be able to seek your counsel, King of all glory. Thank you for all that you've done and all that you're here to do. In Jesus' name I pray, trusting and believing. Amen. So yes, uh, that is it from me this week. I will see you in the next episode. Bye.